So now that we're working on the Christmas tree, I want to decorate this Christmas tree with light clipping lithophanes. Seriously, lithophanes, man, they are like magic. A while ago, I made a lithophane video that involved using Blender. And while you can go check that out, and it's powerful, it's definitely making a lithophane in hard mode. Today we're going to make a lithophane in easy mode. All you really need is a little bit of free software, Cura, the slicer, which chances are you already have. And if you don't, it's actually kind of becoming my favorite slicer. So let's jump into that and take a look at the process. To start with, you're going to need to have a picture. Now, if you're doing this lithophane challenge, I really would like you to find an old picture of one of your ancestors. We're putting this on a tree, so haha, -ha, family tree? I don't know. Uh, you can find a picture online or you can scan in the oldest picture of your grandparents or great-grandparents that you can find. Here is a picture of my great great great, great maybe, grandmother, uh, Almy Almyra Jane Bainbridge. Now, I found this picture online, and we're going to need to edit it just a little bit. I'm using paint.net, which is a free picture editor that's vastly superior to paint, and you should have it installed if you don't already, but you could use GIMP or Photoshop if you have it. So the first thing we're going to need to do with this picture is we're going to adjust it and do an auto level on it. An auto level takes the lightest pic pixel and turns that into white, takes the darkest pixel and turns that into solid black, and then stretches out everything in between. So there we go. Here's this picture auto edited. And now we need to, well, you can take it and edit the resolution down. A lower resolution image is easier to make a lithophane out of because there's not as many points to work with. You do that under image resize. Now this image is already pretty low resolution, 274, 300. 200 by 300 is perfect. We're fine with that. If your picture is too high resolution, scale it down. Trust me, your computer will thank you for that. But then we need to add a black border around the outside edge that will act as kind of a something to for the print to bite onto and sit onto. Otherwise, you're just relying on the geometry of the bottom of the print to give it its connection to the surface. So the way that we do that is, first of all, we set the background image to black, just like that. Then we go image canvas size and increase the size of our picture. And generally speaking, I'll do it by percentage. I'll just say, crank it up 110%. Put our anchor point in the middle so that the edges all around it get expanded out. And hit OK. And voila, there we go. There is our black border around the edge of this picture. There we go. That's all you need to do. Just file, save it, and I, I like to not destroy my original, so I'll save it as and call it edit. And then save it. And we are done with the edits on our picture, so now we jump into Cura. And in Cura, now, you might not have known this. You might have thought, hey, in Cura, all that we do with it all the time is we bring in 3D files. And that's true, but Cura actually has a function that if you drag in a picture, it pops up this little menu here and it converts the picture into, well, not a lithophane per se. This is kind of for taking grayscale depth images extruding it out into a solid shape and printing it. I've done this in the past when I was reviewing the 3D printer that could do also cutting as well, and I compared the process of cutting and 3D printing. And I used this to do that, but for lithophanes, all we have to do is be a little bit clever about the settings. Now, first of all, the height and the base determine the 
the shape of the lithophane. The base is how many solid layers there are before it gets to the actual up and down of the lithophane, and the height is how high that up and down stuff will go. So, for a good lithophane, and it's going to depend on your plastic, you may have to experiment, but with a normal opaque plastic with this same smart white PLA that I'm excited to tell you guys about in a future video, uh, with the same smart white PLA, the settings that I've found that have worked pretty good is I like to have my base at a minimum of 0 0.8 millimeters and I'll tell you why in a little bit and then I want the whole thing the whole thing to be no more than three and a half millimeters thick which means that gives us 2.7 millimeters for the height of it now as far as the width and depth of this you want the width of this to be uh, no more than 70 the reason why you want it 70 is because I'm going to be providing this clip that you slide it into, and this takes a lithophane that's 70 across. But then you just let the depth work itself out. That's how tall it will be. Now we got to change this. Lighter is higher. No, darker is higher. That way the darker parts get to be thicker, and the lighter parts get to be thinner, and that creates our lithophane effect. So with all of those settings set, we hit OK, we let Cura work for just one second, and ta-da, there is our lithophane. There is my dear great-great-great-grandmother Bainbridge right there ready to go. Now, when 3D printing a lithophane, you need to use some special settings for best results. Let's switch back over to uh, paint.net so that I can talk about this a little bit. See... Have you ever printed something that has a top layer that's got some detail to it, that's got some really fine details, and it kind of looks garbage on the top layer, and you just kind of went, well, you know, the sides look fine. I guess the top is just garbage. There's a reason for that. Let's let's say that you're you're telling the slicer that, hey, I want to 3D print something to fit within this shape. And the 3D printer comes along with its green PLA and its 0.4 millimeter nozzle, which means it's squirting out a 0.4 millimeter line, and it starts drawing, and it's trying to draw within the lines, like a good boy, you know. But then it gets to this point right here, and it goes, oh, I'm stuck. I can't go any further. I can't make it back out if I go any further. So I stop here, and I go back down and out. Now, for the first layer, that's fine. No big deal. However, for the second, and not layer, shell. For the first shell, that's fine. But for the second shell, now I have to come through and trace it again, and it goes, okay, I'm going to trace it now. This is the second shell. Oops, stuck. Can't make it any further. And it comes back out. And what it leaves right here is a nasty little air gap that you've probably seen before, and you thought, ah, that's frustrating, but I guess I can't get rid of it. Well, it turns out that you can. See, the funny thing is that when it comes back along to do infill, which it's going to do by just, you know, working a diagonal pattern back and forth between these, and it gets to the edge here, for some reason, the slicer says, oh, wait a second, I can work with that, and it'll just squirt into that last little corner. I don't know why, but it's been doing this for a very long time. I've noticed this forever in slicers that the shells don't ever fill in the corners, but the infill does. So back over to Cura. If you're printing a lithophane, there's a couple of settings that you need to change to get the best results. Number one, you need to change the wall thickness to the size of your nozzle. Now, if you know that your nozzle is 0.4, and it probably is, you could change that to 0.4. If you want to tell it specifically only do one shell, then you can pull up the different settings and pull that up and say just one shell in Cura. Now, of course, we're going to need 100% infill because if there are any gaps, if there's any air in your lithophane when you hold it up to the light, you'll be able to see it. So 100% infill, one shell. Now, the last thing that you might be wondering about is should you print this lithophane laying down or should you whoop, stand it up and print it on its edge? If I can just get it to lay straight. There we go. So you can potentially take a lithophane 
and print it standing up, or you could print it laying down. And if you print it laying down, some people think, well, you're relying on, on your layer thickness in order to give yourself the color depth, and that's true. However, I did print this lithophane twice. This one standing up, this one laying down, and here they both are on a light board so that you can see them, and what, you, what it looks like to me is that it really doesn't matter which way you do it. You could print it standing up, you could print it laying down, they both work and they both look phenomenal. Now I will admit that when I printed it laying down, I really thinned out those layers. I dropped that layer thickness to as fine a quality as I could because I really wanted this to be to, to look as po as good as possible. I wanted as many layers in there as I could to give myself that really fine layer, but it means that printing it laying down took a little bit longer than potentially printing it standing up if you print it with chunky layers. Either way, whatever you want to do, it's up to you. I, I like printing them laying down because I feel like if I print it standing up, it might start wiggling and fall over, and printing it laying down is just more stable. But I, it, they both worked. I was able to get them to work, so take your pick. That's entirely up to you. Now, if you're participating in the Children's Hospital Christmas tree, you'll also need to print out the holder, and it comes with a little cap on it that you can download this in the description and you can decorate this cap with the name of your of your ancestor remember that this is going to be hanging down with the light in it so make sure that if you do put the name on there that you put it the right direction and then there are little ridges inside here to snap it in give it a nice loose fill fit it will snap in there just fine just take this put it in your padded envelope send it to that address right there, and you're good to go. Your customized lithophane, and plus, you can make lithophanes for Christmas for your friends and family. They are a fantastic gift. Gift. They never fail to impress. Everybody always looks at them and goes, yeah, I, I, I guess, and then you hold it up to the light, and they go, holy smokes, it's so cool. If you haven't made a lithophane, if you haven't shown them off, Cura makes it super easy to do, so you should do it. There are also some online tools that you can use to make them as well, and they promise to make them curved or spherical, but I've never been able to get them to work. For some reason, they always take the backside and just turn it flat, which isn't a lithophane. Of course, you know, there's always Blender if you want to do something a little bit more advanced, but I realize that some of you would rather create your lithophanes by hand than learn Blender. But there's still, there's a lot to be that can be done, even with these flat ones. So that's it for today. I hope that that helps you guys, and I hope that you'll participate because I want lots of lithophanes, and I'd love them to be your ancestors on there. But even if you just want to do a pretty picture, if that's what you want to do to participate, I'm not going to fault you and I'm going to hang it on the tree because I want to see them there. But I want to thank you very much for watching. And hey, did you know I'm social? I've even got a Discord. Check out links in the description for your flavor of social media, including Twitter and Discord and Facebook and whatever you're going with. I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying Discord a lot. Getting to talk to you guys is really cool. And of course, big thanks to my Patreon and direct backers. You guys are the wind beneath my wings. And as always, safety first. I'll see you next time.